Hey guys, this is Slimin. In today's video, we're going to be looking all at focal reducers, how focal reducers work, um, how the optics of a focal reducer are, you know, how the light comes in, bounces off the primary mirror, off the secondary mirror, how the focal reducer changes that light and intensifies it, uh, what it's going to do to your view if you're using a camera, how your pictures are going to turn out. So everything today is going to be focusing on how a focal reducer works. And I'm doing most of the uh, content today via computer and my own little illustrations that I make. So hopefully um, the, the pictures will explain a million words for you. And by the end of today, you will get everything about focal reducers. So let's get started. So today I'll be focusing mainly on the uh, F6.3 reducers. Now obviously there is a lot of reducers out there, uh, you know, like a 3.3 reducer, a 0.8x, a 0.7x. Um, so today's video, it's gonna be all about focal reducers. We're just gonna use the 6.3 for most of the uh, examples today. However, the principle is gonna remain the same for any focal reducer that you use. Okay, so let's take a look at how a focal reducer works. Um, in this uh, picture that I made, um, I'm not, uh, I don't display a focal reducer in this one, so I'm just going to show you how light usually operates. Um, it will come down through your telescope, hit your primary mirror back here, and then it will come back, hit your secondary mirror, and then come back again and achieve focus here. And on a Celestron 8-inch Schmidt Cascarine telescope, that's about 2,032 millimeters. And that is what is called your focal length. It's how far the light travels through your telescope. Um, so when you, uh, when you attach a focal reducer here, your light is concentrated into a tighter beam. So you're not actually reducing the focal length in a literal manner. You are just concentrating your light so that you're getting an apparent focal length of uh, f6.3 or apparent focal length of 1280 millimeters in the case of a f10 telescope. So the uh, the light is it just still comes down, bounces back, comes all the way down, and then it hits this focal reducer and then it gets concentrated and intensified into a beam that achieves a tighter or a closer focus there. So let's look at it um, with the original focal length coming in through there. Um, you have your original and you can see how much it deviates. Now this is just my version. Obviously um, there is a exact version probably out there somewhere where someone can get this distance you know exactly 6.3 times different or whatever but that's just a visual representation of the differences in the focal length. So here you're getting a, a longer um, a focal length so you're gonna have a more magnified view and you're also gonna have a less bright view at f10 but once you once you come down here and you hit your focal reducer and you get uh, more concentrated more bright view and you're also going to have a wider field of view um, with a focal reducer on your telescope so now let's look at this the last way so you have your original focal length and like i said you have an apparent focal length with a, a focal reducer on here it's not a literal focal length. Your your light is still traveling, you know, your 2,000 millimeters, um, but your focal reducer is just making it appear like it's only traveled 1,280 millimeters because it's concentrating that light. So it's if you were to continue this line outward, it would appear that this is where your, your, uh, your secondary mirror is. Now, obviously, like I said, this isn't to scale, but it, it, uh, it gives you an apparent focal length. So it could be called an apparent focal reducer, but there's no point of that because obviously it is giving you a brighter image, and so it is apparently reducing your focal length. Not literally reducing it, but apparently reducing it. So you're going to get that brighter cone. It's going to intensify the light right here. You're going to get a wider field of view, a flatter field of view, and a crisper field of view. So a, a focal reducer is really quite a, an amazing thing, and if you really think about it, it's almost like a magnifying glass. Um, you have, you know, if you have ever burned ants before, I've never done it, but everyone knows how it is done. You have your light come in, and it's amplified, and so it obviously is going to um, start burning like a laser beam. And that's what your light is doing here, obviously not that intense, it's just being uh, mag uh, intensified here and coming to a closer focus. 
So I'm going to show you an illustration of actually what an image is going to look like. Um, you're going to have a intense beam in the center with your, if you're taking a picture, you're going to have a little circle here in the center with a, a picture around it and you're going to have a nice intense bright image in the center which is going to give you reduced exposure times than your original focal length of f10 so we will go make a little picture right now okay so let's actually take a look at what a focal reducer is going to do when attached to your telescope uh, let's assume you're using an f10 focal ratio schmidt cassegrain telescope with an f6.3 reducer lens or a focal reducer on it um, so let's make a let's make a circle here. Let's get a nice gray color and let's make a circle like that. And let's fill that circle in like that. And we'll make the rest black. Okay. And let's say we're going to be taking an image of Bode's Nebula. And as a side note, just real quick, a focal reducer will affect your images. Um, much more than it's going to affect your, your view in, in the case of vignetting, and we'll talk about vignetting in a minute. Um, so let's just jump right there. Let's make a, a nice view of Bode's Nebula. Let's make, it a, let's make it a light blue color. Okay. Let's get that going here. Get a galaxy. M81 referred to as Bode's Nebula or Bode's Galaxy. And let's make M82, which is a starburst galaxy. With lots of star formation going on. We're going to make that red because many pictures give off a beautiful red hydrogen gas. Okay. So there's M82. And let's just make some stars throughout our frame here. Okay, let's get some stars going on. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but about two weeks ago, um, I believe at the end of January 2014, a supernova was detected in M82. So we'll put a little supernova there just to emphasize that. Make it nice and big. And it was a type 1a supernova, which means you have a white dwarf star that's accreting or or stealing gas from a, a giant uh, companion star of its in a binary system and once it's accumulated enough gas that white dwarf will actually collapse and explode it's probably one of the coolest things you could ever see um, if you could see one with your naked eye but well I guess it would be the hottest thing but <laughs> you get what I mean so we have our stars here and our little type 1a supernova and let's make some stars on the outside here. Um, what color do I want these? And let's go a little darker of a gray, see if we can see this. Okay, perfect. That's just what I want. So why am making these why am I making these stars darker here on the outside? Well, if you're using a focal reducer, you're gonna be getting what you call vignetting. And that's a difference between the corners of your picture and the center of your picture. Now this is really, really exaggerated. It's not this bad, I promise. And it can be fixed with flat frames, um, but that's a uh, topic for another day. However, you're gonna get a, a focal reducer is going to give you a nice intensely bright image here in the center. It's gonna intensify the light into a cone, which is going to produce a bright image in the center. And you'll get a little bit of vignetting on the corners of your image. And like I said, that can be fixed with flat frames. However, this bright image here in the center, what's so great about using a focal reducer, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you're going to take less exposure times with it because it's, it's giving you a brighter image here in the center. And so basically what it's doing is it's intensifying the light, whereas if you don't have your focal reducer on, it's going to come to the same focal length as it normally would, but once you stick on the, uh, the focal reducer, it's going to reduce that focal length by uh, 0.63 uh, multiplied by the focal ratio. So f time f10 multiplied by 0.63 is 6.3. Um, and so what it's doing is it's not literally cutting your focal ratio down to uh, 6.3. That would be impossible unless you uh, cut the light somehow from traveling. 
but what it's doing is it's giving you an apparent focal length of 6.3 and it's giving you a, a faster gathering power. So you're, get, you're gathering light faster than you would at f10. So when you're at f6.3, you're going to gather light faster. It's going to intensify here in the center of your picture, and you're going to get a wider field of view. So it makes for a nice, crisp uh, picture. It will flatten your field, which is good, and make it more clear and just give you a nice, crisp picture. So a focal reducer is quite amazing. Another cool thing about a focal reducer is when you're using it for visual use, you can see the entire moon uh, through an Agent Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, whereas without a focal reducer, you have to get a very, uh, very low magnified eyepiece to do so. Um, so I always use my focal reducer. Um, star clusters are just absolutely beautiful when you are using a focal reducer. Um, they're flat. You just get a lot of light, and it, it is just gorgeous. I, I tell you what, if you don't use a focal reducer to view deep sky objects, it's something you should probably start to do. You'll get a really good view. Um, the only thing I wouldn't recommend it using it for is planets because obviously it's going to make your planets smaller um, because it is making your field of view wider. So our thing, there are things you don't want to use it for, um, but generally I will use my focal reducer for almost everything that I look at. Okay, so let's look at some images uh, taken with a focal reducer and some without a focal reducer. These were all taken by me using my Celestron 8-inch uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Uh, the non-focal reduced images are about uh, 2032.3 millimeters, and the images taken with the focal reducer are about uh, 1280 millimeters. So you can see here, uh, this image was taken without the focal reducer. You can get some good detail in the uh, the mountainside here. You got a lot of snow, some pine trees, some pine tree formation, some rocks, a lot of rocks here on the, the face of the mountain. And then I have a, a pine tree that was perfect to show the effects of a focal reducer because it stood out right in the open here. So I put a little red opaque circle around it. And let's check out what um, what a focal reducer is going to do. So we go to the image with the focal reducer. These are both taken using the exact same settings on my camera. One is with a focal reducer and one is without. Uh, you see the the details are, are all washed out here because remember we talked about the focal reducer intensifying the light. So all the, the snow, the snowy detail is washed out whereas it's not washed out in that image. Um, and then your your field of view is greatly increased. See how small the, the pine tree is compared to the the other one? So you're almost uh, cutting it in half because f6.3, all you're doing is you're multiplying your original focal length by 0.63. So it's almost half of the focal length that it originally was. And then also we talked about how the focal reducer makes a crisper, flatter field. Well, you can see uh, you get some more uh, pine trees here and because they're, uh, the field of view isn't as great, you get a little bit crisper view, a little bit flatter views towards the edges here. So a focal reducer can do some awesome stuff. Um, and especially when you use it for astrophotography, you're going to get a lot more light and a lot uh, shorter exposure times. And we'll look at that in a few pictures. Okay, so here is the sun. Uh, this is without a focal reducer. You can see some really good sunspots here through the middle. Um, and then you get some up here at the top left. And obviously there's no orientation on the real sun, but for the purposes of this picture, this is the middle. <laughs> but you can see that without the focal reducer, you're getting, you can't get the full sun in your image. Um, it's cut off at the bottom and at the top. And then if we look at the one with the focal reducer, you have plenty of room to spare to get the entire sun. And it also looks a bit flatter. The focus looks a little bit better because the field of view is increased. So a lot of people, when they're taking pictures of the moon, they will throw on their focal reducer. Um, and as well as the sun, they'll throw on their focal reducer. Or if they even want to um, use a, a focal reducer with their eyepieces to view the sun, they can do that and they'll get a crisper view. And the sun's actually a really neat object to view and and image but i really like the full disc picture than the one that's cut off so i always use a focal reducer if i'm going to image the sun with my schmidt cassegrain uh eight eight inch schmidt cassegrain 
Okay, so in my illustration earlier, I was talking about the Type 1A supernova in uh, Messier, uh, Messier 82, which is the cigar galaxy, and I made a little drawing for you that was uh, not really uh, any good, but uh, for the purposes of this video, I needed to take a picture at 2032.3 millimeters to show you um, what, it, what the field of view is like without a focal reducer. And you can see, without a focal reducer, you, you have an increased field of view. Your stars, uh, the focus, will start to show more. If you're out of focus, you'll see it more. If you're starting to trail, you'll see it more. You can see I'm starting to trail here on one-minute exposures on my uh, um, Celestron Advanced VX mount. Um, and you're going to have to take a longer exposure to, to get more color out of it. So I actually was really excited that I was making this video at the time I was because I wanted to image this supernova and uh, doing it at 2032 millimeters was perfect because I wanted to get it nice and big in the field and you can see it nice and good right there. So let's look at a view that uh, using the focal reducer, uh, you can see I actually captured M81 in here as well and the field of view is greatly increased it's a lot crisper. You don't see as many trailing uh, errors. And what's funny about this is I actually took this on my Celestron Nexstar mount, which is a, a altitude azimuth mount. So I could only take 30 second pictures without star trailing. And look how much color I got with 30 second pictures with the focal reducer. Quite a bit of color. Whereas if I took off the focal reducer, I had to take one minute exposures to get that. Whereas without, or with the focal reducer, I only had to take 30 second exposures and I got this. And this was taken in June, so you notice there's uh, no supernova. This image is actually upside down at the other one, so it would be down here. There's no supernova. And then in this one, there it is. So that's kind of cool. You can kind of compare the two. No supernova there. And then you have a supernova there. And look how uh, increased the field of view is without the focal reducer. It's a lot a lot smaller with the focal reducer and a lot more crisp. And the reason this image turned out so good without any vignetting is because I uh, used flat frames and flat frames are essential if you're using a focal reducer. So to show you an example of vignetting, I have an old, old picture that I took when I really didn't know what I was doing. And uh, you can see in this picture too, I'm not the greatest processor. Uh, at that time, I cut out a lot of the data by clipping um, clipping into the black so not the best picture but you do see the difference between no focal reducer and focal reducer now here's an image taken of the wild duck cluster and you can see some serious vignetting here there's some blacks on the edges and then it gets lighter and you can see that and that comes around it's kind of a circle see a, a big circle you get blacks along here and a little bit lighter into the middle. That's because you're intensifying the color so you can take shorter exposures. So if you take flat frames, you can totally fix that and it's really easy to do. And uh, it's almost essential to do to get a good image. And this was also taken on my Celestron Nexstar mount. So it was altitude azimuth and you did get some star trailing, a little bit of noise in here, some light pollution. And I still didn't know how to process very good when I took this, but um, I was actually kind of grateful to find this because you can see the vignetting in it. Whereas with this one, I did take flats and there isn't any vignetting. Okay, well that sums up today's video on how a focal reducer works. Hopefully you now know everything there is to know about a focal reducer. If not, if you still have some questions, be sure to leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. And thanks so much for watching.